Good morning, everybody. It's Lori, the frugal mom, and it is about 6.30 on Sunday morning. It is April 6th, and I am just out of bed. Um, I splashed some water on my face, I brushed my hair, and here I am. I've had some things on my mind for the past couple of days and some things on my heart, and I figured I would just talk about them with you. Again, excuse my appearance because I did just get up. <laughs> um, so, let's see, how is everybody? That's the first thing. Get that out of the way and ask you guys how you all are doing. Um, I hope everybody is well. Everybody had a nice Easter. Sorry I haven't been putting much content out there. Um, I've been a little busy with various things in life. And um, I have got tons of ideas in my head for content, but just nothing's really materialized. And I've been in a little bit of a rut, to be honest with you. So let me get on to what I was talking about, what's been in my heart and been on my mind. So, you know, it seems like we're just in this very self-absorbed way of thinking as a culture. Now, I'm not saying everyone is like this. Um, and I know that everybody's circumstances are different. It's just a feeling that I have deep down. You know, back when I was little, um, which I know was a long time ago, but back when I was little, um, you know, more people were apt to help each other. You know, um, when I was very small, I remember my mother and father and all of our neighbors always lending a hand to each other, always just doing nice things, not for any reason, but just to do something nice for someone. Um, you know, we, the house that I grew up in when I was very small, when we moved in, we moved in when I was two, um, we were surrounded for the most part by elderly people. And my father was a very handy person. So, you know, oftentimes he would offer his help to some of the neighbors for um, different things. Um, or one neighbor, Mrs. Smith, who lived directly to the right of us, uh, she needed to have her chimney reinforced, so he did that for her. You know, um, I remember other times him helping people shovel out, just different things like that. You know, and no one ever felt funny asking for help. Um, and in return, um, you know, something nice was always done, but it wasn't expected. You know, for instance, um, I remember being out in my yard playing when I was little and my mom was sitting uh, on the back porch watching me and um, Mrs. Smith then came over with a plate of cookies, which was so nice. Or on the other side of our property, there was an older gentleman who had the most beautiful garden. His name was Mr. Thorpe. And, um, you know, oftentimes he would... Um, offer my mom and dad vegetables, fruits. He also grew the most beautiful flowers. So he would, you know, pick a bouquet to give to my mom. Um, just nice things like that. Um, you know, just then, you know, people would talk over their fence with each other. They'd make time for each other to check in and see how each other is doing. You know, people would ask you how you were and they would actually want to know what the answer was. And of course, you know, like if something really major was going on, we would do often like we do now and when ask that question and if it was too heavy and we didn't want to go into it, of course, we would kind of like skim around the corners of how things were. But oftentimes, you know, you would have like a real deep, not on the surface conversation with these people because you got to know them well after a while and you could confide in them and since they were older, they had been through life. So, you know, I remember my mom saying that she really appreciated some of those talks with the neighbors. And like I said, it was just a different time and everyone did things to help each other. Small things, big things. And no one had to really ask anybody for help. You know, if someone passed away in the neighborhood, and the, sorry, there's my kitty walking behind me. <laughs> anyway, my thought was interrupted by the cuteness. So if someone passed away in the neighborhood, for instance, um, you know, um, people were there to lend a hand. 
whether they needed a babysitter for their kids. Neighbors pitched in and would do that. Meals would be brought to the house. Um, now we have meal trains. Um, you know, it just makes me sad that in a lot of communities, things just really aren't like this and people really have become more self-centered and more into their own lives. And believe me, I get it. Life is busy for all of us. It really is. And I know that we're tired. Some of us are working multiple jobs. Some of us have debilitating disabilities. Um, we've got kids. We've got their activities. We got their needs to be taken care of. We have homes on top of it that need to be taken care of. Lots of responsibilities. But I don't know if that's any different really than it was back at the time that I'm talking about. You know, it was a little bit different, but I don't really think vastly different, you know, in terms of the amount of time that people had to do things. I think that there's real busy, and I think that there's busy that is created. And what I mean by that is, well, we have a lot of technology now. That is the main difference of how things were back then and how they are now. And I think that there's an artificial busy that we create in our lives because a lot of us are so tuned into social media and all of these other distractions. And that's what I mean by artificial busy. You know, everybody likes to rewind. Rewind, I'm okay. Unwind <laughs> on their phones. This is true. Um, it's fun to, you know, scroll on Facebook and whatnot, but... It's altogether another thing if, you know, you're dedicating too much of your day to it and then you're saying you're too busy to do something kind for someone else, um, to take a minute to return a text, to call someone, to have a genuine conversation with them, you know, to go visit someone, you know, I know everyone's life is different, like I said, and I don't mean to sound judgmental, but this is really how I feel. I think it needs to be said. Um, there is always something that you can do to help someone if they need it. And sometimes they're not going to even ask you for help. Um, because they don't want to be a burden. But, and I'm switching hands. Sorry guys, and my hair is uncomfortable on my neck. Anyway, I digress. So, um, there's always something that you can do. Um... You know, you can call up a friend and say, hey, you want to have coffee? You want to come over for coffee? You want to meet for coffee? Um, you can just simply return their texts. Um, it doesn't take very long to let somebody know that you're thinking about them. Um, you know, um, if you happen to know someone is going through something, you, you know, if they tell you that they're working a lot and you have a little bit of spare time and, and, and your schedule... You know, um, you can bring them a cooked meal, take something off their plate. And this doesn't have to be something separate than what you would usually make your own family. Just double the batch of whatever you're making one night for dinner. You know, um, if they're having car trouble, offer a ride. You know, there really is no excuse to not be there for the people that you love and the people who are important to you. Um, you know, this is how we build community. And I feel like that sense of community that we had growing up, it's kind of slipping away because we're becoming more and more self-centered. Um, and I know the world is a stressful place as well. And I know that there's different reasons for why people don't offer up themselves to help. You know, and I know people are tired, believe me. You know, I get it. Um, a lot of people say, well, Lori, you don't technically work anymore. I don't. This is true. I do try to work a few days a week when I'm feeling up to it. I'm always busy in my house. Um, I do still have my two teenagers that I take care of, my cats, and I look after my sister. Um, I do have lots of appointments every week to deal with various things. Um, so I am busy in my own right. And... Um, I know that it might seem to some of you that it's easy for me to say this from where I'm sitting. And like I said, I don't mean to sit in judgment. 
and that's not my intent at all. But everyone is tired. You know, our parents were tired back in the day when they were still doing things, acts of kindness for other people. Um, there's always a way that we can still contribute and do something nice for someone. You know, you worked a full day, I understand that, but you can still reach out to a friend. Um, you can still listen to what they have to say, or just connect with them. It doesn't even have to be that they're having a hard time in their life. We all need connection, you know, and it's fine to send a text, you know, but sometimes you need more of a personal connection with someone. And I think that through all this technology, we're losing that. We're losing the art of a good conversation. It doesn't have to be a long conversation. If you have 10 or 15, 20 minutes, you know, you can have that conversation while you're driving home from work. If you're not distracted by that on your Bluetooth, if you have that, um, you know, you could give somebody a call. It could be anybody um, when you're making dinner. If you're not engaged with your kids, um, it could be anything, really. You could be folding laundry and just call for five minutes and say, Hey, I was thinking about you. How are you doing? What's going on? You know, and if you sense that it's going to be a longer conversation, you just kind of say to the person, unless they're really deep into something like upsetting or wonderful for that fact, Hey, why don't we continue this conversation another time? You know, I have to sit down for dinner with the kids, but I really want to hear what you have to say. Um, and then you try to make it, or you don't try, you make a time to, to continue the conversation later so that that person feels heard. It's not hard, guys, and we can all make time for people, and, you know, like I said, you have to cut out that artificial busy, and that's not to say that you don't take time for yourself to unwind. Scroll through Facebook, go through your emails if that's how you unwind, watch a mindless TV show, do something for yourself, but... You know, there has to be a limit to that. We all have to try to be interconnected again, really. And, you know, then there's the flip side of that. Some of us are so into being there for others that we don't take time for ourselves. So you got to do that too, because like I always say, you cannot pour from an empty cup. So this is something that I'm guilty of. Um, I am going to go outside and do something for myself today. I'm going to take a, a walk after I take my shower today. I'm going to try to get a haircut because, believe it or not, guys, I have not gotten a haircut since July. I've been cutting my own bangs. <laughs> not so well, <laughs> but good enough to get through. Um, so I think I'm going to do that. I've been kind of avoiding it because it's kind of pricey, as most of you know, for a lady to get her hair cut. But I think I really need it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for me today. Or try to do for me. I'll at least call and see if I can get an appointment. Um, so that's the other side of, you know, how things can be. I find that we need to find a balance. You know, like, we do need to be there for other people. We need to make that a priority as well. To be good stewards. To help each other out. Um, but we also need to be there for ourselves and to refill our cups so that we can give. Um, you know, I see so many people who just think because they're not really wealthy people or, um, you know, they don't happen to have a whole lot of time on their hands at that stage in their life, because there are different stages of life, of course, where we're limited in whatever resources, time, money, emotions, um, whatever it might be, you know, but there's always something that you can do to help someone. And if you have that ability to do it, why wouldn't you do it? Right? So for instance, I have a friend who doesn't have a car right now and they need a ride to work and, and to get home from work. So when I can, which is most days, I give them a lift back and forth to work. Now, I do have to get up early some days to do this, but, you know, they live, like, a couple blocks away from me, and they're kind enough to reciprocate by giving me gas money or picking me up something from where they work um, when they need it. So, that's what I do to help them. 
um, I know that I don't have to, and sometimes there's times where I can't, so I let them know. But I'm blessed to be able to have a vehicle, so I, you know, kind of give back to the universe by helping this person out. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people help me in my life, so that's what I mean. If you look at your life and you look at all your blessings and see how you've been blessed, there's always a way that we can use those blessings to help someone else. You know, um, for me, also, I like to cook and I'm pretty good at it. So if I hear that a friend isn't feeling well or they're going through a rough time, I will cook them and bring them a meal. And oftentimes it doesn't even have to be anything different from what I'm cooking for my family. I'll just double the batch so it's not that much more work for me. Simple things like that. Or there's been times where I don't have time to cook or I've already cooked for the week for my family. So, you know, I just do something affordable like um, I'll send them a pizza and, and like a two liter bottle of soda or something like that if I'm able to. And at least that takes that one thing off their mind. And I'll call them and say, hey, I'm sending a pizza to your house tonight because I know that you've been busy. You know, and they're very appreciative of that. And I'm not doing that to get, like, any recognition. It's just that I pay attention to what's going on in people's lives. And I try to, like I said, make everybody's load a little bit lighter. And I think that if we all did that the world would be a better place. Um, not trying to sit up on my soapbox and preach and break my own arm, pat myself on my back. But these are just examples of what I do. Um, and I encourage other people to do the same. You know, like, I know I have a lot of friends who are constantly doing kind things for other people, and I think that that is awesome. But I really think we have to start as um, a community to look inside ourselves and see what we can contribute there's so much going on around us all the time um but i think that we're blind to it and i think that the technology in our world it's kind of helped to make us blind to that it's a distraction and we don't see the whole world around us all the time and maybe some of us don't want to see what's going on around us because it's really unpleasant some of it and don't get me wrong, there's still plenty of beauty in the world. And there's wonderful things that go on every day. But there is a lot of ugly. Um, the other thing that I would encourage us all to do is understand that, yes, right now, there's a lot of um, hot topics going on about politics. And all of us may not agree with each other on these things. Don't let politics or your personal beliefs necessarily get in the way of friendships, how you treat other people. Um, there's a lot of divide. It all divides us. Republican, Democrat, whatever political um, party you belong to, whatever candidate you endorse for the next presidential election, whoever you endorsed in the past, you know, all of that doesn't matter we're not always going to agree on these things. So just agree to disagree respectfully. Don't fight with one another about this. Like I said, that just divides us. It makes no sense to keep doing that, to keep perpetuating this divisiveness in our lives. Move on. <laughs> just accept the fact that you're not going to always agree with everyone and move on from it. Um, a terrible thing happened in town yesterday. There was um, an older man. He uh, operated, I believe it was an RV that had um, Trump paraphernalia all over it. He's a big Trump supporter. I have met him once. He was friendly enough. I don't happen to agree with his, his, um, his beliefs, and that's fine. I never disrespected him and he never disrespected me as far as I'm concerned as far as I know he really didn't do that with anyone else either he was just a huge Trump supporter that's fine but unfortunately there was other people who were very very bothered by his presence in his RV 
So the poor man was murdered yesterday. And I'm very sad by that. He was attacked by someone in the parking lot of a store, a local store. And that is just so wrong. This has to stop people, all the violence over what someone believes. It's everybody's business. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. I got a little jumbled there in my thought. It's everybody's right to believe what they want to believe. You don't get to tell other people what they believe. Just remember that. And as long as they're not harming you, then let it be. Like I said, we're not all going to agree, and that's okay. It's what makes the world a great place. Differences of opinion and different viewpoints, and sometimes we learn from each other with these things. That's just life. If we were all the same, life would be boring. People would be boring. So just understand that. And just know that no one has the right to push their beliefs on someone else and hurt them and God forbid in this case take their life because they don't happen to agree so you know I pray for this man's soul and his family um, I just hope that the insanity stops nothing's worth taking someone's life over it's just ridiculous <sighs> so on that note, I encourage you all to look inside yourselves, find some time in your daily life that you can do a kindness for someone else because that's what makes the world a better place. And like I always like to quote my Angela, one of my favorite authors and poets, be a rainbow in someone else's cloud. Um, we all have the ability to do that. Um, you know, we're only here once stop getting so distracted by your social media a lot so much time a day to do it also find some balance and do something for yourself something that you've been meaning to do something that nourishes your soul and if anybody has any comments on this I welcome it I hope that you all have a beautiful Sunday Saturday <laughs> I'm on the wrong day I hope you all have a beautiful Saturday it's a nice day here in New Jersey get out and get some air, get some sunshine, um, and love each other. I thank all of my subscribers, all of my new subscribers, welcome. Please subscribe, like, share, comment. Every one of those things, it does something to help my little family, and I appreciate it. I'm trying to grow the channel. Um, I know that you all aren't going to always agree with me, and that's fine. I look forward to healthy, positive, um, you know conversations that's what i'd like this community to be about um and we can go from there so god bless everyone happy saturday happy weekend and i will talk to you all soon take care